thank you very much for the invitation to, to this conference. It is a pleasure to try to share with you some thoughts. Okay. And then you can say, what are you doing an engineer in a conference like this? So I think the answer was given some time ago by Ontario Gasset, the philosopher from Spain, that I, it says that it is uh, necessary to be alert at least the job itself, to look carefully to the landscape of life that is always total. The faculty of living is not given by any job or any cells. It is the symbolic of both grades and those cells and many other things as well. So I try to follow this recommendation, then I will try to do my best then. Then this is the plan uh, I, I suggest to, to do, is just to say, well, what is the point I can develop here? how I can approach this, and then certain problems that are very important today on evolution of technology and its relation to society. Let us see some of your points of this. Now, okay, so first, trying to place ourselves in the context of this kind of conference, well, this kind of series of conference, there is a certain number of keywords that are utopia, progress, revolution. Well, all these kind of topics, they are synonymous but this synonymous thing means in mathematical terms there exists a compatibility relationship among them, but not transitivity, so there's not equivalent relationship. For example, utopia. Utopia suggests the idea of total perfection, but be careful because there exists some dangerous perfection, and the history is plenty of that, okay? Revolution. Revolution is said even in the all for papers of this conference. The revolution is always a first at all in a, in a mid-mind. I am not sure of this, okay? Because revolution is an even driver, almost to immediate important change. Then, are we able to say that uh, the Neolithic or the cultural revolution was a real, real revolution? Or the industrial revolution was a real revolution? Because the industrial revolution was just an improvement in the manipulation of, of, the, of the energy <coughs> by developing the very basic uh, steam machine of Newcomb, for example, okay? But I am completely sure that Newcomb had no idea what he was uh, doing the first step in a change so important for the life in the humanity in this society. On the other side, there exist many atrioristic conceptions that I do not share. For example, people say that the factory system is just a consequence of technology. I say that it's not only a consequence of technology, it's a consequence of technology, of course, in part, but it appears as a social control of production. So there is this trade-off, this multi-objective, multi-perspective thing we need to take into account. Among the key words used in this previous conference, there is also the concept of progress. Okay, progress is something that can be considered in a multidimensional space, in many perspectives. What is the concept of progress I am thinking now? Well, this is to paint from a very famous painter from Spain, Dario de Regolo, in which he's expressing what is the idea of progress. Look, for example, in this one. In this one, we have a small children with a horse that is crossing, and then he's putting two things in two different levels. And then, even more, they are on top of it. This is very nice, very nice, because it's expressing we are over, and then there is a different direction. And the most different direction may be or should be the orthogonal for sure. And in this case, it's the same. Two levels, and they are orthogonal in each other, okay? So this is the kind of progress. This kind of progress that represents, even in the 19th century, many uh, perspectives that now can be considered as very nice. For example, this is like elevating the technology, or technology, the scientific and technological level to the level of godliness. Okay, in this case, it's not Prometheus, it's the electricity that is bringing the light, and then we have the telegraph, so even if very nice here, for example, you see how Europe and America are falling into itself, okay? They are falling by falling itself. Another idea of this shape is you look at this, at this uh, picture. This picture is the, <clears throat> at the end of the 19th century. You can say that this may be a kind of pilgrimage. <coughs> the Virgin of Rocio in Spain, or I don't know, Fatima here in Portugal, or something like that. But in fact, it's not this, it's the electricity is coming. 
is we have the machine for producing electricity in the so-called fabrica de luz. I mean, the electricity, the electricity uh, you see the what's called in this time in Spanish, fabrica de luz. Okay, because the first broad application of electricity, not the only one, but the broad application perceived by society was illuminated. So, progress is multidimensional and very perspective, and then progress needs to innovate. And now I, have, I am very skeptical about the definition of innovation in general. Because if I look the Oxford Dictionary, if what is to innovate is to make change in something established, especially by introducing new methods, ideas, or problems. Example of innovation with this rule. A building designed to be working in Sweden, I mean, it's something like 60 degrees of latitude, is rebuilt, for example, in Canary Island. That is 30. And then, of course, the, green, <coughs> the greenhouse effect needed in Sweden is really a pain in Canary Island. But it's something new. There is nothing like this in Canary Island. So it's an innovation. Well, what happened later? The innovation they put, something that is improving with the quality, and then you need to put the concept for this, for this kind of, 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 uh, of uh, appreciation. Because <coughs> and then, Innovation. Innovation is also a, a word that is meaning something different. For example, for engineer and from economic people. For engineer, for me, it's an intrinsic technical novelty. New mechanism, new process, new, process, new concept. But from the economic point of view, and then the, the key person on this is Jupiter, and Jupiter says that innovation is a real institution in the market. I mean, you may have something that is, from a technical point of view, very poor, but if there is a big success in the market, this is innovation. Okay? And then on the other side, we know that there is this many nice development of technology in the history that went <coughs> probably before the time of going to the market, and then advancing one, two, three decades was not considered as innovation by economical people. In the economical perspective. So, in some sense, what I am saying, we have a different perspective of what is the know how from what is the market. <coughs> now, a point is to be a perspective with the engineering and platform as I am. Frontiers and revolution, the topic of this conference. Well, there are many concepts that we can miss the utopia, fantasy, audacity, progress, creativity, social and knowledge constraint <coughs> that are more or less interesting. And then in this context, I will just bring two ideas from two philosophers of Spain. One, Juan de Dios García Barca, and the elogio de la técnica, he said that the technician, the technologist, is a practicing authorist. And for the other thing I said, I mentioned already, he said that the engineer is the technician or the technologist by excellence, not the unique, of course. So, the question is, where the intellectual history plays in general in the classification of knowledge. And then I make just a reference, a reference to the discourse preliminary de l'encyclopédie de Tiberio de la Barbera. In the advertisement, they do not close the alternative between mathematics and natural science, this is in particular, versus social sciences. They say they do not close this because in general it is something in part of both sides. <coughs> and then and along this line of thinking, in general, really involved in the activity of the society, I like very much this statement from the ordinance of the Royal Corps of Military Engineers of the 18th century in Spain, 1739. They say that uh, the, the, the goal, the mission of engineering was to remain with the art, with, with the technique, the effect of the nature, just to improve the nature for our better living. And then in this answer, there are differences, for example, with scientists. We are completely complementary, but we have differences. And then one of these differences is marked by Theodor von Karman. Theodor von Karman was an engineer, an astronautical engineer, and also a scientist. And uh, in fact, he's the first medal on science from the United States. And he said that the scientist described what is the way the engineer did what they were possible. Or in the same kind of life, the for of science. The unique person in the world that has the Turing Awards of the most prestigious 
prize from computer science and the Nobel Prize in Economy. And then he opposed to the idea, partially, a bit, as analysis and synthesis. And then he said, natural science is knowledge about natural objects and phenomena. And we speak about economy as concerned with synthesis, while science is concerned with analysis. Okay, so this kind of thing may complementary activity. And then, the know-how. The know-how, I mean, in the companies is very important. So it's a know-how that is not classified in scientific terms. Okay, many companies know how to produce or how to make certain uh, artifacts, but these are not catalogued or they are not classified in classical uh, knowledge. And on the other side, it's very important to see <coughs> on the enormous distance, enormous distance, I say once again, between the validation of a process or protocol in a laboratory and to try to produce this in mass, mass production and to bring it to the market. The difference is so important that the investment sometimes are much bigger than just to produce the first idea. So, Technology, and we're considering the notion of progress, and then the technological progress. How we play it? And then I say that there exist several key words like intuition, audacity, and sometimes fantasy. And then from the, to this development of technological progress, where are there? Well, there are of two kinds. Of two kinds. The first kind is that designing and building without knowing enough has been a constant through the history. I mean, we don't know how. But we do sometimes, okay? And even if it's said that uh, Javier Manterola, this uh, construction has never waited until the theoretical process <coughs> was by the contents themselves the were something. Okay, so we are able to do in engineering things, or we don't have a still a theory for that. <coughs> and this kind of activity, we have plenty of examples. For example, the steam machine worked before. We have thermodynamics or we have automatic control. Or, for example, we, the human were able to fly before we know the theory for, for, for flight. But the theory for flight, as we will say later, will appear in Germany after the first flight. And then, to cross this border and to jump over these obstacles and insufficiencies in understanding is a recurrent history in history. It's not like something new is from the very beginning, from the Neolithic Revolution, and things like that. But of course, if we don't know enough, we are taking risks. And taking risks means that there are failures on this kind of problem. And then we need to take risks, but then we need to take also the notion of critical thinking on this. Example of this, <coughs> I say the steam machine. The steam machine but it was described by uh, Eric Ashby from the University of Belfast in the book, a nice book on technology and the current, 1958, saying that the steam machine was made by hard heads, but small figures. Okay, they know how to make to work the machine, but there was not a theory for that. Later, the dynamics arrived, automatic control theory arrived, and we will see. Some years later, maybe for sorry, Hugo Gulder. Hugo Gulder is an engineer from Germany. Is a theory, one of the first PhD on engineering in Germany that had a very important role in technology in Germany because it was uh, working with diesel and lean, so with the motor and with the refrigerator. Okay? And then he said, in fact, I put, because the book, the book is in German and in Spanish, I hate to say to put in Spanish, then he said clearly, el motor de, de combustion engine, the internet, due to creation and development to the development and experience. Every perception in, in this kind are coming from the industrial field. And later, what happens, like in the steam machine, once we have the first engine, later there is a theory for this kind of engine. So the engine are before the theory itself. But this means that there is risk. For example, Petrovsky has a very nice book. Now there is a second version of this. But I just take the first one, it's very broad, even you can download it in the, in the, in the internet. It then says that the engineer is human, the role of failure and unsuccessful design. Okay, well, you have chapters with titles like, for example, falling down is part of growing up, or when cracks became breakthrough. I mean, when we are able to learn from breakthrough. 
Example of this, for example, Tacoma Bridge. Tacoma Bridge is a bridge that was made <coughs> in the state of Washington and was is a suspension bridge and was a, a bridge with a very low weight, very narrow. And that narrow means flexibility. So they constructed the bill, the, the, the bridge was opened in July 1st of 1940, and 7th of November 1940 happened to Brasilia. It start to move till the Philip finally collapsed. What happened? What happened is that at that time, it was not the first suspension bridge, because for example, the Golden Gate was before, or the George Washington Bridge was before, that are much bigger. What happened is that the extreme flexibility in order to reduce the weight, so the cost, made that it start to be great. And then the vibration at the beginning was thinking to be tolerable. But what happened with the system? I can try to make it again. It's vibrating, but at a certain moment, it makes a torsion. And then this is like the, the, the aim of a, of a plane. And then when you have this, it goes much after. He turned around and then down. And then you see oscillation is going to be bigger, bigger, and bigger. And then it collapses. Who made the analysis at the end of why this bridge goes down? It is very funny. It was not a civil engineer. It was Ford Cameron, an astronautical engineer. Because it was probably of mechanical fluid. And then after that, the consequences were very clear. Bridge in the model, later, either mathematical or physical, they are used, for example, with a tunnel wheel, in order just to check if the, 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 it will be safe enough. Or, for example, in the, in the, in the aviation, in the aviation, there are many, many constructors of, of planes that die. And then it is a, it, I, I will say that this is not a honor, but this is a, a fact that there is a Spanish guy that is, a, a, that, that, that is the first that died in his first, his, his same uh, plane. This his, his guy here yeah, is uh, Tony Fernandez, he's a dressmaker. And you say, what is making a dressmaker making planes? Remember at that time, 1909, the plane were plenty of clothes. Okay, it's not it's something now that is in place. And he say, well, this guy was not good enough. It's not true. He made previous planes that were selling, the, the pattern were selling, the perfect were selling to Levasseur, for example. And there are a line of planes on, on this kind of design. So it is, there was a risk, and he accepted the risk, and he had a this guy, this, this problem, he died, in fact. And then, let me say that the fundamental boundary layer theory, that is the theory that explains why the Hilbert and the A is able to fly, is starting in 1904. But in, fa in, in practice, the, the theory of right, it is a German engineer, it's a good in practice. In practice, this knowledge arrived to the design, let me say something like 10 years, 15 years later, not at the moment. But this is nothing new. If you look, for example, in the Ling, Ling White book about the Renaissance engineer, he says something very, very nice. I, I like it very much. And say, at the 15th century, monarchs were eager to increase not only their farmers' might, but also the prosperity of their realm. And they hired engineer to construct wonderful machines, palaces, and fortresses, helping to bankrupt every government. And then the number of examples is full. I mean, so once again, we try, but we don't know enough. So it's a frontier for this. 19th century in Spain, we have also another example, I cannot develop it, we have no time. Charles de Beau, an engineer of, of the, the Spanish pop of engineer from France, or the other from France, he just proposed to make a channel from Madrid to Sevilla, okay? Well, it was completely crazy. Hopefully there was a problem with the original dam, and then the problem was forget later. So it's an idea that a, 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 a problem has a good consequence for the system. So, what are the, the cultural insufficiencies for, for doing the job and, and the development? And in, in, in one slide is knowledge, and the other side is cultural <coughs> inertia. And then for this, I like to bring very much to bring the idea of uh, 
technical system. Technical system is to say, in some example work, is that to develop something, you need to have a substratum, not only the idea, but a substratum, technical substratum, for able to, to, to develop it. For example, in Spain, the Buddha Lighthouse. The Buddha Lighthouse by Lucio del Valle, a civil engineer, was designed in 1854, but was impossible to construct in Spain. It was constructed in, in England. And this, this, uh, this light, uh, lighthouse was the tallest in the world during several decades. So it was the most important in the world. The destructor. The destructor was a kind of, 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 of ship, a war ship. It was designed by the, uh, uh, a naval official, Fernando Villamil, 1885. Was impossible to construct because the technical system in Spain was not developed enough, and then was constructed in Glasgow. Or more modern, the revolutionary Calvo II from Spain, the train designed by the military engineer Alessandro Goicochea in 1950, was constructed in the state. Why? Because it was in aluminium, and aluminium at that moment we don't have in Spain enough electricity. And for producing aluminium, you need a lot of electricity. And then we have no stream electricity, and it was stored in the state. Why? Second reason. Because after the Second World War, a lot of production systems of aluminium, in aluminium for the, for, for the planes, were without job, and then they have a very good possibility of developing that. Or, once again, I repeat one idea of what they like I said, say, in 1940. Uh, 14, I am myself on my circumstances. It's, what, it's this idea that is being the, considered by the technical system. For example, Leonardo Torres Quevedo was impelled to progress in the development of his flexible air ship. And this is the idea. What he made, the dirigible, that the was semi flexible. Okay, the rigid one were working very well. You put the, 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 the weight in the center and there was no deformation. But this is very difficult to transport by the robots and to transport in chips. And then they decide to make it flexible. Then you can collapse and then you can uh, breathe quite easily. <coughs> what happens with this? When they are flexible, if you put some weight in the middle, it is disturbing the, 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 the behavior because it's unable to navigate. And then this idea is the trilobulator uh, dirigible, and then we have a formula that a form from it geometrical point of view, mechanical point of view, so that when you inflate, it's not able to make this kind of thing. Well, this development was really <coughs> very important, it was even, this is, this is a photograph of the experience in, in Guadalajara, in Spain, but later to go to the market, to make the development to the market, was impossible to do that in Spain. We don't have the technical system for doing that, and what all finally in France, by the abstract company, and then the 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 the, 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 the Astra Torres, and they were also made in United Kingdom with the airship company, even in Japan, but we were not able to do that in Spain. The Autohiro, the Autohiro is the predecessor somehow of the helicopter. Well, it was proven, and there was a machine that was flying in the first condition in 1920 in, in, in Madrid, in Cuatro Vientos. But for developing the technology at the market level was very difficult, and they would make the Sierra. He go to the United Kingdom on one side, he found a company, and he go also to the, uh, to the state. And the state he make a large alliance with Big Bang, and they make the Big Card Sierra of the Union Company. And then, of course, flying over to New York or flying in, in, in Washington was a very expensive activity. You know, the, to do that, and then you need not only technology, but also uh, money for making this. Among other consideration on this, <coughs> well, frontiers are of cultural nature, but <coughs> there are also frontiers on the aesthetic criteria. And then <coughs> the idea is very simple. 19th century, the iron made constructions. The architect start to do this kind of building because they see how engineers do. But they realized that showing the, the, the iron was very aesthetically not very nice, and then they put certain envelopes to the, to the building just to catch the real essence of this. 
And then, for example, in Madrid, it's a very clear example of this. El Palacio de Bellas Artes uh, in uh, Artes Industriales, now is the School of Tech Engineering and the National Museum of Sciences. Okay? So I went somehow everything new was hidden from a cultural uh, consideration. And now, how to predict that? How to predict this kind of thing? Or what prediction helps to do? Well, first thing is to say that to predict is a very risky task. The only advantage is you predict in something like 200 years, you are safe. Because you will not know that you make a mistake. <laughs> but if you make a prediction in five, ten years, then you are very, very risky. Okay? For example, Terradas is a very famous, very important engineer of Spain. In 1910, after writing the article for the Encyclopedia Spasa, he said, in fact, that the aviation will have a very limited expansion because it's very expensive. Well, in parallel, Gaspar Brunet, another industrial engineer, that was the designer of the first, of the first plane of pure experience and the first book of aerodynamics, he saw all transatlantic planes, that the, like the ocean liners. But he said that the helicopter will have no chance at all. Well, I would say 10 years ago, he was working the, the, the auto hero, and 30 years ago, he was working perfectly the shop of his helicopter in the same. The expansion, for example, of the computer is something amazing, and you know, for sure. For example, if I take a reference at 1970, the computer had uh, in the memory around 100 kilobytes. Now, something like, uh, well, in this year, we have a terabyte. So this means that every year has been growing at the rate of 50%. This is an explosion, really, in the system. If you look at supercomputers, supercomputers in 1988 were of the order of 1 gigaflop. Now, I will say 30 years later, we are 1 exaflop. Okay, so this means double every year. So one more million times in 30 years. So what means this? So it means that technology is evolving in a close loop with the feedback that is positive. And this is very positive, it means that it's exponential. And this is very difficult and possible, I would say, to, to, to change the system. And then what we are getting, we're getting new material, new optimization method for energy, new decision support system for information, and new concept and technique for the design of effect of life. And then I will say something that I think it is very interesting. In general, have been always interested in developing daily artifacts. Now, biological engineering and things like that are able to develop with the humans, I mean, and the animals and the plants and so forth. And then in this process, there is a relation. Yes. And then we need, we need change of paradigm, new open light. For example, yesterday we were told about the quantum computers, okay? So we have a possibility that is clear to see. And now, another problem for <coughs> trying to um, predict that. One problem is serendipity. Because sometimes we found things very accident. And then for this, probably the most nice example is Fleming and the Penicillin. He found without switching explicitly. But there is another idea. There is another idea that is from David Alberto, that is in the book of the shock of the old technology and global history in the 20th century, in the 19th, and in the 20th century. And he said there is an idea that is very important and is not usually very well considered. That improvements, improvements in all technology are even sometimes much more important than new ways of doing that. And then there is an example that he uses, it is from chip technology. Chip technology ships do not change dramatically in the 20th century, but change of course. Why? Because <coughs> they have new properties of engine, new electronic control and positioning system, new materials leading to new architecture and so on, but the change is not so big. And then they have a proof for you in this, I, I write a, a, a few weeks ago a chapter in a book on the reflex of technology on painting and poetry in Spain in the 20th century. And then, if you look for plays, there are plenty of poems, plenty of painting. If you look for poems, plenty of poems, plenty of painting. If you look for 
Chips, almost nothing. Almost nothing. Well, this is probably a proof. It's not perceived, even if this is a period in which, for example, the ocean line was so important for immigration. From a social point of view, it was so important, but people were not interested. And now, this progress, how is it evolving? Well, I just give you a social perspective for this. And let this say one perspective among many others, okay? Then I will say that with the Industrial Revolution, we forced, it was already, no, it was already not completely new, we forced the idea of mechanization. <laughs> and then what is mechanization? I will say, I take uh, the title of a uh, uh, beautiful article in 76, last century, from David Nabo, say mechanization is the master and tool extension. Okay? And then it appears without, with, with, with this kind of mechanization, the basic idea of automation, in which the key idea is feedback. Feedback allowing to make the design of regulation. Regulators are what? Are machine engines, artifacts that allow the system to work in itself in a autonomous way, following a rule. For example, a regulator is a, a, a system that keeps the temperature inside this room at the about 22 degrees. Or a regulator is an engine that keeps the speed rotating a machine at a certain number of revolutions per minute, something like that. Okay? And then in this development, were made essentially in the 19th century, there is something very, very nice I will tell you. The most important regulator was the so-called centrifugal regulator. That sometimes in the books are called the what regulator. What has nothing to do with regulator. He uses it. He does not develop the, the, the regulator. And then what is this? Centrifugal are two balls. Then on a, on, a, on a system like that, when it is rotating, depending on the speed, if the speed is very high, then it goes to the horizontal balls. If the speed is very low, they go down. Okay? And then what happened in this period? Well, is that if the system was unstable, was oscillating the speed, what happened is that the regulator do something like that. And then at the period, at that time, instead of speaking of unstability, they say the machine is starting to dance. Well, the dancing was so very dangerous because a certain moment was completely destroyed. And then the first theoretical result for this was given by a well-known physicist and mathematician, James Plus Marker, on a nice uh, article that is called On Governance, 1868. But he gave a criterion for stability, but he doesn't know how to compute in a sample way. And there is a sad and funny history from his colleague, Ed Edward Roots, <coughs> that he, they were colleagues even in the classroom, so they know very well each other. And then one day, uh, Ruth appeared in the Royal Society in London and said, well, my colleague in France, is not able to solve the problem of computing the existence or not of Ruth on the right hand side. Well, well I, the technical thing I will skip that. But just today, after lunch, I was thinking of this, I have the solution I will choose. Well, it was not true. It was something like 10 years working on the top. <laughs> On, on, on the and then there are the regulators, and then it is another form of machine for making the system to work by itself a several mechanism. Several mechanisms that are able to follow a certain trajectory and to put much more energy. For example, driving a small boat is very subtle. Driving on a cell line, well, should be much more energy. And then this is provided by the several mechanisms. And of course, with the power of electronics, the transistor from 1947 and the small, medium, large intra integration, we are able to arrive now to, for example, contract that alcoholic problems. In fact, robot is more or less, let's say, that servo mechanism, a slave mechanism, and robot is more or less today the same. And the robot, there are many different. And then people use now the, 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 the word robot for things that are not real robots, but for example, the robots that are ask, asking to uh, uh, buying or selling actions in the stock. Well, this is not a robot, this is, a, this is a something else. But they are isomorphic, polyarticulate, and polyarticulate you have fixed on range of one degree of freedom to 
automatically they will be able to navigate, draw and submarine and able to work in, in, in three dimensional space. And then with all these things, uh, we are passing them from historical point of view, from the Moscow and Tube extension to the brain extension. We are able to solve the problems that before we are not facing. And now a social perspective on this. Uh, what is doing automation and robotization? Well, to increase productivity, to improve the quality and uniformity of product, to save materials and energy. This means that uh, we are able to produce in a cheaper way better products. Okay? <clears throat> and from another perspective, this means that uh, from a social perspective, the workers are able to work in greater security with more comfort in developing their stuff. But we are back to this kind of slide. I am working on robotics, so well, I am critical with certain things uh, in a social sense, not in the technological sense. If you have something like that, you are self-producing machines, or cars, for example, in this case. So we need to do, to do these kind of things because we are in a world market competition. But uh, what about the state of warfare? These robots are paying taxes, for example, in order to, to, to be able to redistribute to the state. Well, this is a problem. It's not a problem either of Spain or Portugal or Germany. It's not either a problem of Europe. It's a world problem. It's a world problem. I will not say to go back to this. I like this very much because this is a, the photograph of the Renault company when he started to work as far as Spain in 1923. At that time, painting and everything was done by hand. It was an artisanal way. Several years later, it was a small production in series with the so-called carousel system. Now, we have something like this. Okay, when we have robots that are able to displace, and they are co-painting. I mean, there is one robot presenting something, the other is acquiring, the left pass another, and so forth. It's not in isolation. They are very complex systems in this. And then, what I'm saying that automation and robotics are making possible the incredible. And then there are many, many systems of today that are able to work with the way that are not able with the automation, for example, the time plane or any production system, nothing like that. And of course, there is a problem at the social ethical level because certain mass of uh, water can be reduced to a very small quantity but at a very different level of intellectual, uh, intellectual level. <coughs> but robots are today the day of the manufacturing, okay? Why I say that? If you look, for example, the keyword in IEEE Technology and Society magazine last year, you see keywords or titles of particles like ethical robots in welfare, robotic new industrial revolution, robot enhanced therapy for children with autism, sex robot matter, socio-economical and legal things, and then you have robots today like firefighter robots, artificial robots, submarine explorer robots, forest striker for robots, companion or pet robots, and so on, something like that. This is just a, 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 an anecdote. It's, we have a drone. You know that drone is the, the bee, the, the male of the bee. Well, it says that this was the, the emblem of industrial engineering in the 19th century in Spain. And then the idea is the result of the bee is working together in society, so we are talking, okay, this industrial speaking, they are producing the honey. Okay, then for example, if you look at this, this is what we call, we call, I don't know the word in English, in Spanish it's emblema parlante, the book of honey of engineering parlante. And then it is a, of industrial engineering. How to read this? This is the star, five point star. This means the genius. And then here you have the bees and the company, so this means the activity, the industry. So the genius of the industry, the industrial engineer. Okay? Well, let us try to start to approach the end of this. Well, problem at sociological level today. With globalization, I know we are gaining a lot. There are many products that are cheap for us. But with globalization, we are increasing this equality in an extremely dangerous way. In my because very few companies are taking so much power that are even much more than middle-sized states. And these kind of people, I mean, these managers, 
group of engineers, economists, or physics, or something like that, they have been not voted, but by God they put the capital. And the, the increasing this social inequality do not contribute to social stability. And then thinking of new ways for social organization is clearly a matter to consider. And then I claim here that humanities and political leader, I am sure that we have leaders at the level of the required faith, should make effort in this like rising proposal for discussions. And just to finish, there is another idea that we work with very much. Among the important frontiers for the development are the limitation on basic physical ingredients on our good planet. <coughs> I will not say that the book I recommend to give a lot and after the destiny of the third mineral resource a thermodynamic rate to ground climate is a book should be read looking only to the numbers, should be read like a food for sin. It says somehow that it's not only faith, only For example, right material, metallic material needed for the mobile or things like that, they are exhausting very quickly. And then it is me that sooner or later the problems with the, uh, the confrontation, the military problem may appear with a very very important probability. And now, the pleasure ran parallel <coughs> in an exponentially increasing garage, part of which is primarily going to the sea. For example, the phosphate, and when you did dissolve the phosphate in the, the sea, and recovery is uh, impossible. All different plastic elements that are passing to the food chain. Okay, so this is happening today. And then the exponential. <coughs> The exponential consumption of these substances will lead to more political military increases as the short time of water provoked military conflict from time to go, from the ancient times, not nothing. So, in other words, there are many issues still on the nation road. And I say that reusing, collecting is not the same as recycling. In this last case, in recycling, we have to move on cyclical processes, cyclical processes with decreasing yield and economic return, and then with physical side conditions. So they are more difficult, incomplete, and most common. And this kind of reflection going without the technology, animation in which the technological product had advanced the evolution of society from another point of view and discipline. Yes, with humanities, for example. And think now you have your internet, your computer, and things like that. Okay? Even if it's very clear, from the time of the computer and with the arrival of internet, the way in which and the style in which papers or books on history are written are different. So you can check it out. Thank you for your attention.